This is boost weather, boys. I know, I know, I know. Before you say anything, I know it needs an exhaust, needs downpipes, needs test pipes, uh, needs a lot. So I actually realized we have a check engine light, which we shouldn't, so we're gonna need paper clips. And I'm gonna show you guys how to pull the code under 300 if you don't have an OBD1 reader. And to be honest, I feel like this is much more simple. Turn on the ignition. You should have a Christmas tree dashboard, and now we're gonna get into the fun part. All right, so this is your OBD1 port right here. If it isn't just hanging here like mine, which is not very good that it is, it should be like tucked up here somewhere. All right, we're gonna go ahead and short out this pin to the right and the top one on the right. This one right here and this one right here. And that's why you need a pin or any type of wire. All right, now I gotta focus because it, the reason why it's blinking, it's giving you a wide variety of codes, which I'm gonna put a picture right here and I actually have to look at myself the picture so I can see what um, code we have so we can see what's wrong with the car. Yeah, I have 51 and 32. Let me show you guys. One, two. That's 51. Three. One, two. And that's 32. So I have code 51 fuel injector unit that sucks. I have code 32, EGR valve malfunction, and 34. It went away, now we're idling good. Like we're idling perfect to be honest, right like around 800, 900. Since the check engine light is gone and the car's idling good right now, I'm gonna do a couple pulls just to really make sure that it's not just that I cleared the code. It says that it could be corrosion in the wires, wires that weren't put back correctly or connectors uh, that weren't correctly i don't know it could be a, a good amount of things it doesn't necessarily have to be the injectors because i mean if it was the connectors then it should come right back up after i do a pull or if it's like the wiring Check engine light is back, it's just constant. Uh. Alright, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and track down the problem. We're gonna start by unplugging the uh, coal pack sensor instead of taking the whole coal pack out. 
and see if the car is running on six cylinders. We're gonna see if there's a difference taking it out and putting it back in, so yeah. Those driver's side cylinders are good. Now we're gonna try the passenger side. Although that test kind of sucked because I mean all cylinders are working. I just brought out the toolbox that the previous owner gave me and I found in here two injectors. So we know that two injectors are fairly new. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, this is like a good old trick that you can use. You can actually get like a little really long flathead like this, put it against like right on top of where the injector sensor would be. I think that's how you call it. So like you see it right there. So that's what I'm talking about. If you put this in, into the metal that's right behind it. If you put the flathead right on where the metal's sitting, you can actually put your ear and you can hear if the injector is ticking or not. It's kind of like an injector not firing correctly. They should be taking like ta 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 at a very constant, normal rate. Now, if they're like tech 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 or just like way too quick compared to the others, then that's probably a bad injector. But so far, I listened to all of them. Taking was pretty constant. I mean, I double checked it. Sadly, this sort of just tells me if the injector's firing, but it doesn't really tell me if it's clogged or if it's going all the way down. And Basically, the only thing I can do from now, since they're all firing consistently, I don't know beyond that. Uh, I can get a multimeter, check the connections on the spark plug, and yeah, go from there. Ooh, another thing though, that I'm pretty sure could be the problem. A bad fuel filter, a clogged fuel filter. This is pretty cheap, I mean, not that expensive. And that is something I really have to change, so that could be the other problem. All right, I'm not gonna lie, kind of bored. So we're gonna go ahead, take out the spark plugs real quick, check them, because I do have to order some, but I just want to see kind of the condition they're in, and work on the car because the weather's perfect. And us Floridians, we got we gotta take advantage, bro. So I just realized I recorded a whole section of looking at the spark plug and I didn't recording. I wasn't recording so. But overall the spark plug looks pretty good. Um, it wasn't super black at the tip where it makes a connection so that's good. We're not running super rich or super lean. It's just wear that's why it looked like that bad. And looks like we're in. Oh god. Like, I'm obviously gonna change them, but being completely honest with you guys, like, these aren't, this camera does not want to focus, these aren't that bad. Kind of impressed. I don't remember if the owner, the previous owner told me if he changed them or not, but pretty impressed. <laughs> Baby, all right, cars idling perfect. This is running great. I checked again. I did the trick again to see if this, the spark plugs are working, and they are. But let me show you guys a surprise that I've, I don't think I've ever showed you, and I'm excited about. So, I have another plenum for the Z, and this is where it gets exciting. So, as you guys know, I gotta do the EGR delete because it's giving me codes, and EGR means more delete means a little more power, and it's just better for the engine. So, since I have to take off that plenum. I can grab this one, polish it, maybe paint it a certain color, 
and put it back in. Now that I showed you guys that, that we checked everything and we had some fun with the car, I'm to uh, take advantage of the boost weather one more time. What can I say, bro? Can't blame me. I literally look like a highlighter right now. Also, I just wanted to say, if you boys are new to the channel, or if any of you are new to the channel, it only takes a couple seconds. Just go ahead and subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. Like, you guys have no idea. And smash that like. We appreciate you. <laughs> Bro, we're going like full boost right now. Let me do another. Oh my god. First gear doesn't work. This doesn't. Second gear. Oh my gosh. Bro, this car is so fun. I really hope you guys can hear the boost and it like just going sideways. Here it starts spooling right at around 3k. Oh my god! <laughs> that was first gear just all the way and then second gear. Bro! <laughs> I'm gonna end this video right here because it is cool. Hold in, I gotta get home. All right, boys, as always, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up for some 300ZX content. Like, give it a big thumbs up and sharing the video with everybody. Like, you have no idea how much it helps the channel grow, us grow, cooler projects. I hope you guys enjoyed. And damn, that was that was fun. That's a, those are the first times I actually ripped this car. So, Whew. and I might on the way home. I might not. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Like and subscribe. Peace out.